Okay, look, if you've paid attention to internet culture at all or Dungeons & Dragons news, you know about the Twitch leak. And if you don't know about that, I'll explain it in a second. The main thing you need to know right now is that Twitch leaked a ton of information that they shouldn't have because of, I don't know, some hackers. It's more complicated than that, and I know more about it than that, but to be honest, I'm not an expert, so I'm not going to talk specifically about that because I would probably spread misinformation, which I really don't stand for. The main thing you need to know is a lot of the information that was shared was very private, and one of them was about the top earners of Twitch's streams. The top earner in 2020 was Critical Role. Now, the reason I want to talk about this, other than, you know, generally like talking about Critical Role, is because I think I have a unique insight on it, and I've been really upset to see the response that I have. I've seen a lot of people complain because Critical Role made so much money, and so they're wrong for monetizing that? And at the same time, I've seen a lot of people who have really put down those who have complained about the fact that Critical Role made that much. It's been kind of an all-out war. And while I don't want to bring more attention to the negativity and all that, I, I do want to say something about this, because I think based off of my channel, it's really something that I have a voice to say something about. So, let's talk about it. Let's start with this. I've worked with a lot of business stuff in the past. I can't say specifically what, because there's a lot of legal reasons and some social media contracts that I kind of have to uphold, but basically, I've worked with some businesses and even helped run some. So I have a general understanding of how that works and especially the monetary value of certain things. And recently, it's really been weighing heavy on me that a lot of people have been giving Critical Role some problems with the fact that they've been making money off of this. I mean, they put so much of their time into it, why in the world would people be upset that they'd want to be able to make money so that they can put more time into it? But honestly, I think it's just because of a general lack of information in the community, which I understand. Not a lot of people understand this kind of stuff, and so it may have hit them by surprise. After all, Critical Role really advertises itself as a small community of D&D players. So to suddenly realize that it's a multi-million dollar company, which yes, they did make multiple millions of dollars off of their stream, probably hit a lot of people by surprise and shattered the illusion that they were this tiny little table of D&D players having fun and, you know, having success in what they were doing. And I think the real reason that a lot of people are upset is it shatters the illusion that they could do the same. I mean, after all, there was a bunch of nerdy ass voice actors just sitting around a table having fun playing D&D and they got popular off of it. And if the small little table could do it, then hey, sure, so could literally anybody else. The success was out there for anybody to grab, but the moment that they saw that Critical Role was literally the top earning stream, that was ruined. Suddenly, it wasn't attainable. It was something impossible for anybody to grab, and I think that's where probably a lot of the anger has come from. But beyond that, it's the anger that people feel lied to. They feel like they were watching this small group of friends have fun and realize that it's way bigger than that. This, compounded on the fact that Critical Role has recently been cracking down a little bit more on their merchandising and making sure that their brand is protected, has really struck a sore spot with the Critical Role community, and D&D is large. But generally, I think people just misunderstand, and I really want to speak on it because I feel like I generally have a better understanding of it just because of my past background. So here we go. Critical Role. Has it become a sellout, merchandising giant, something that's just not worth looking up to anymore? I'm not going to try and drag this out and, you know, pull view time on my videos by trying to convince people to watch further so that they can learn about what I think. The answer is simply no, and I have a very firm reasoning for this. I've worked with a lot of companies. I've seen the way a lot of companies act. Critical Role is just simply not in it for the money. For starters, let's go ahead and look at their stream and what they emphasize when they talk about things. On average, they give Laura about maybe three at most minutes to talk about her merchandise. And she's the one who advertises actively the merchandise that they sell. And for those of you who don't know, merchandising is the biggest part of a company's ability to make profit. If you don't believe me, look how much Disney made in merchandising in the year of 2018. They made $4.65 billion. To put that in perspective, that is 32.0197% of their total revenue for the 2018 year. 32% just out of merchandising. You probably think they make all of their movie off of monies. or Disneyland, Disney World, literally all of their theme parks, and yet, 
merchandising is where they make the most of their money. With that being known, Critical Role spends such a minimal amount of time merchandising. At the beginning of their streams, which is their main way of advertising by the way, they let you know a small portion at the beginning of it and then the rest is all devoted to their game. They could spend so much more time advertising that stuff and let me tell you, if they spent more ad time on it, more campaigns on it, pushing more of their merchandise, they could be making so much more. But they don't. Because they're focused on their game and making sure that their community gets to see what they came for. But okay, that's not addressing how much they actually make off their stream. Again, they made $9 million. But let me ask you something. Where did they make that $9 million off of? They made it off of subscriptions, off of gifts, off of the community giving to the stream that they like. And can you tell me if you've ever remembered them asking for that at all on their streams? Because I don't. The fact of the matter is, the reason they've made that much is because the community wanted to give that to them, and that's awesome! It's so great that we've wanted to support these nerdy ass voice actors sitting around a table. We've all collectively done that because we care about them and we want them to continue doing what they're doing. So why are we mad at them for making money off of it, especially when they didn't ask for it? And if you're still further not convinced that they're not in it for the money, let's talk about the Critical Role Foundation. I'm gonna be honest, I haven't gone through and I haven't looked at all their streams and I haven't done a percentage count or actually looked up the view time for these things. But just based off the top of my head, how many times have they spent more time talking about the different charities that they're supporting than their merchandise? Not only that, they went ahead and designated Ashley Johnson, who is an extremely hard worker if you look into anything that she's done professionally, as the main spokesperson for the Critical Role Foundation, where they spend specific time making sure to raise money for other people. Different charities, different people in need, not for their company. And mind you, that is money that could be going to them. They are advertising those charities to the same people who would be donating to them and building up that $9 million. And the last bit, which let's not forget, is The Legend of Vox Machina, in which they asked for a very small amount of money to make a 20 minute animation, and the critter community blew them away with millions of dollars. They didn't ask for any of that but it was given to them. And that's the second point I really want to make here aside from my main point. It was all given to them because they're just trying to be good people, trying to do better, trying to make a good community and do well with what they've been given. And that's just inspiring. It's so inspiring. And I don't think they should be hated because they've made a lot of money off of it. Let's not forget, they have all of their cast members to pay, the crew to pay, a lot of different areas where they need to spill out money for different reasons. It might sound weird, but in the grand scheme of things, looking at all the expenses they have to pay, 9 million is not that much. It's a lot, don't get me wrong. It's amazing they've made that much, and I'm sure they're doing well off for it, which, good on them. They put in so much effort. But when you have to pay for rent, you have to pay for your building, you have to pay for your cast, you have to pay for your crew, you have to pay for equipment, you have to pay for licensing, it adds up that 9 million is just not going to be as much as you think. And if you think that 9 million is going directly into all their pockets, you're just wrong. And we still don't even see the different donations that they do outside of the Critical Role Foundation. Now, is this video just made for me to be able to defend the Critical Role cast because I'm such a fanboy of them? No, though I do want to defend them because I understand where they're coming from. But I also want to speak out on something I don't think a lot of people understand about this situation. As somebody who has had to put a lot of time, too much time, into running a business, you just don't understand the pull and the heartache and the difficulty it can cause when you are having to put that much time into something that is not able to financially uphold your family. Travis is the CEO, and he has a wife and a son to take care of. Matt put so much time into this game, so much just for his players, much less the audience. He can't afford to not be paid for this. Marisha pours her heart and soul into being the creative director and developing all of these different shows for us to watch and enjoy. She can't do that for free. Liam and Sam have so many projects just outside of Critical Role. They're both really active in the voiceover community. They can't just keep doing this for this amount of time. And Ashley? Ashley is putting everything she has into this Critical Role Foundation to make sure they're giving as much as they can to charity. And she's doing that on top of being a very well-off actor. The point I'm trying to make is if you're going to put this much effort into something and you're not being able to make the money you need to be able to take care of things, it 
it becomes so much more stressful. It becomes something you can no longer put your heart into. And I know I speak for the critter community when I say I want these people to be able to put 100% of their heart into what they're making. To put it simply, if you're going to put so much time into this thing, you need it to have a monetary gain. You have to see it grow. You have to know it's being improved upon or else it becomes a burden. And I know I don't want this to become a burden for them. Ultimately, at the end of the day, I see these people and the actions that they take as business owners. I see the actions that Critical Role takes with Travis at the CEO seat, and I applaud them because I see the efforts that they're making to do better, to do better as a company, to improve the world, to make a difference, to not just take that money and hoard it. They have not decided to take the success that they have and just keep it away. The fact that Twitch leaked this shows us how much they've been making, but I really don't think it was that much of a secret. It just took the critical community by surprise because they didn't realize it beforehand. The fact of the matter is that Critical Role has never tried to hide the fact that they're trying to take their influence and the money they're making and make the world different, better even. And that takes heart and community. You may have noticed earlier when I mentioned all the Critical Role members, I left out Taliesin. And the reason that I did that specifically is just because I've listened to his interviews. I've listened to his thoughts on life, what he's gone through. And it's very clear to me that he has a very special place in the Critical Role community, and the table specifically, because he cares for and takes care of the other members as they've been trying very hard to make this something worth it. And I think that's the point, is Critical Role, the company, everything they're trying to do, they just want to make the success that they've had worth it. And I say that simply from having to deal with all these businesses in my past and having to deal with, well, capitalism, which can be really draining, and know that's what they're dealing with. And seeing their actions, it's very clear to me. Honestly, I think this quote from Ashley in an interview with Screen Rant kind of sums it all up when she was talking about the Critical Role Foundation. I think that's what we're excited about. I mean, seeing the response from the community with those first charities that we worked with, and, you know, the early years of streaming and throughout. These past five years, six years, that's what we've been streaming our show. We've all very much wanted to work towards creating positivity with that attention and seeing the response from this amazing community. Like, it's completely blown us away every time we've boosted a charity campaign and talked about it. It's blown us away that every time this community is so amazing and ready to go on that journey with us, and we're so thankful for that. For the past couple of years, we've been talking about it and sort of putting this together and we're like, it would be really cool if we could do this full time instead of just for short bursts at a time. Look, the truth is, is I know how draining it can be to be a part of the business product. To have to focus on revenue, on profit, to have to focus on making sure your employees get paid, that you're going in the right direction, that your bank account is trending up. To have to deal with contractors, to have to deal with different businesses, to make sure that your employees are under the different specifications of your state. It's exhausting. And to put that on their D&D game? I have nothing but respect for them because they've chosen to take something they genuinely enjoy and love and put that responsibility on them to make a change in the world. They want to make a change full time. And I understand, I really do, why people are upset at seeing how much money that they're making. It shatters the illusion that they're just a small table of D&D nerds making it in the world, but that's still what they are. Just because their revenue says they're making that much does not mean that they are not making a difference and a change in the world with what they are making. So as somebody who has had to be in their position, don't assume that just because there's money involved, they've sold out. There's so much more to the story and they're showing constantly that there is more that they're doing. I 100% want to see where they're going next. Enter the Critical Role cast and community, go out into the world and make it your own with every bit of revenue and money that you make because you can and I believe in you. Don't forget to have a great day and Critical Role, keep playing your role. I think you guys are doing just fantastic and if this small little YouTuber can tell you that and it means something, awesome. More power to you.